All right. So we're going to start Revelation chapter six here. Um, you know, so you know the, the the meat of Revelation is, of course, when, we, when he gets to the prophetic stuff. Uh, in Revelation um, six, what we get is first of all, you had the letter to the churches, and that's almost a separate book. It really is. It's like Jesus' letter to the churches. You could call that and end it as as a book. Yeah, and the next, the next section we have is the prelude to um, to the 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 atmosphere of heaven. John describes what heaven was like, and so you see God on His throne. You see the Christmas trees, the twenty four elders. Um, you see all this stuff, and so you get a picture of what what the throne room looks like. All right, in Revelation six, what we're going to see is an overview. Um, it's going to talk about overall throughout that tribulation period. All right. Let's take a look at uh, the broad overview. Use. All right, so now we're going to jump into Revelation chapter 6. And keep in mind, um, the seals and everything, this is kind of an overview. It's hard to, this an overview of the, tri the Great Tribulation. All right. I watched as the Lamb open the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four, four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there was before me, and look, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. Now, the exact identity of this conqueror, I, I don't think we know with certainty. Um, many people say this is the Antichrist. Now, keep in mind that he, his conquest is not necessarily, he's got, he's got a bow, uh, and and the crown, and so it, it's this is like an actual government official or government, a king, a ruler, and we have him going out bent on conquest. Uh, some people believe that this is more spiritual, that this is the spirit of Antichrist uh, making conquest of all the nations of the earth. Um, that makes a lot of sense too. So in in any for basic basically, evil wins. Um, that's kind of, I think, a general consensus is that this is the door being opened so that evil now is in charge of, of the world. Okay. Now, after, but anybody got any comments on that, by the way? Any other, any other views on what that white horse might mean? All right, let me go to the next one. All right, so who is the conqueror, an agent of good or evil? Again, the consensus is that it's evil based on what happens next. They say behind every great man there's a great woman. Well, I say that's so bull right there. Well, none of these nasty women I just told you about stood behind men. They stood right beside them. So we got to get it done ourselves, ladies. Am I right? You get it, girl. You get it. We got to burn this patriarchy down. Woo! Annie Banani. Hey, you, uh, you got any plans later? My church is having a bring a friend night. You know, I'm just not really much of a church person. You're definitely a stuck-up bitch. <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah. Yeah, see, the old me totally would have meant that, but uh, born-again boomer don't judge. Okay, the point of the point of that is that evil is now in control of. I mean, it doesn't take a genius if you're a Christian you recognize that evil has become pervasive in our culture. It's in our entertainment, as you just saw right there. Basically, we have, they have little kids talking about how worthless men are and that women don't need men anymore. I mean, that, that, this, is, this is pretty counter to what the Bible says. Um, the Bible presents the genders as needing each other. Um, the Bible presents the family structure as a good thing. And what we have now is a culture that, tears it all down, that says, oh, whatever, what God called good is really bad. And you should shun it. You should see good is now bad and bad is now good. So it's in our entertainment. It's in the TV shows. It's in the movies. It's, we, we've known that it's been in the news for a very long time. Um, the, basically, evil has purchased, when, when it comes to anything that influences people, 
they have purchased it. They have purchased the news. Most recently, their, accusation, their, their acquisition is they've purchased social media. And now they're starting, and it's, you're, you're all probably aware of this, the censorship of social media. And their fact-checking is always against us. It's against good. It's against Christianity and pro um, their agenda. And their agenda is Antichrist. Okay? So this is not a secret. This is pretty obvious as to where we're at right now. And everybody realizes it. All right. So that white horse, um, that white horse, as far as the conquest is concerned, uh, my impression is that it's spirit of Antichrist. That's, that's, that's what I think, um, I, I, you know, in terms of where we are right now. And I, I could be wrong. You know, I mean, I'm not the first person to be wrong when it comes to interpreting Revelation. All right. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, come. Then another horse then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. Now, this is, uh, this is pretty much World War III. This, the, the casualties from this war, as we're going to see as we move on, are one quarter of the world's population. If we go by today's estimates, that's approximately two billion people that die, not just from the war itself, but from the ensuing famine and disease that happens after the war. So this essentially is, will shut down grids all over the world. Um, people that are in poor countries are going to be dying in droves. Um, the, the food conveyance that we have, our, our, our food network is going to be severely disrupted. So a lot of people are going to starve to death. A lot of people will die of disease and infections. Um, this is going to be really, really bad. So it's kind of a natural consequence. In the, with the first, with the white horse, you have spirit of Antichrist or Antichrist himself ruling the world. So evil wins. So what do you do with all the people whose values are different than evil? What do you do with all the people that are sincere in their attitude towards God. Well, the war, I mean, there's gonna be rebellion. People aren't going to stand for that. And when they rise up, this war is going to ultimately result in mass destruction like we have never ever seen. So that's, that's the red horse. All right, a lot of people are talking about the second American Civil War. And our, we are very polarized. Um, you know, I don't know if this, this war will play into that third world war. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's scary to think about. There are so many possibilities right now. Things are heating up. Um, we just, I don't know. Um, it's pretty bad, though. We've never seen an adversarial atmosphere in this country like the one that exists right now. Not since the Civil War. When the lamb opened the third seal, I, ho I heard the third living creature say, come, I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of um, scales, I believe. Yep, scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarts of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. So how do you interpret, anybody have any ideas on that, that, that what, what, this, what this spirit is saying, what this creature is saying? Anybody have any ideas? What do you think inflation, that is? Inflation, I think. I think yeah. inflation, inflation. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, that is a clear, clear, uh, it's not even cryptic. That is a clear description of gross inflation. So money... Um, is not very valuable. Commodities, are, what, the commodities that you have in your hand are what is valuable. Money, the, the, the monetary system is in very serious trouble here. So you have runaway inflation and people's money isn't going to help very much. You're not going to be able to buy very much with the money that you have. So now when you have runaway inflation, it preferentially hurts people with low assets. So poor people, low middle class people are the ones that are going to be more severely hit. The super wealthy and the very wealthy says, and do not damage the oil and the wine. These are things associated with kind of with wealth. And so there are going to be people on the top who are going to be just fine. Uh, but 
you know, because these are luxury items, whereas, whereas these for other things, those are things that you absolutely need. So, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of my take on it. I could be wrong, um, but, uh, or there's plenty of oil and wine. I have a hard time <laughs> thinking that it means that literally, <laughs> okay, given everything else. So I suspect that, that that's what is being talked about here. So and it makes sense too, if you take about, if we have that massive war, that horrific war, supply lines and the grid are going to be down. And so if you, if the, you know, we saw what happened with this virus, with coronavirus. I mean, how long did it take before you went to the grocery store and there were entire shelves that were bare? Now imagine something this cataclysmic, there will be nothing in the stores. The trucks will not be delivering goods. So yeah, it's gonna be bad. It's going to be very bad. So essentially, the commodities that you have on you are going to be worth their weight in gold, uh, figuratively speaking. All right, when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Now in the Greek, it's actually described it as pale green. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind him. So massive die off. Uh, this is going to be very severe. And it's a direct consequence of the war that, that is gonna happen. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. So again, this is the kind of consequence that war happens, supply lines are destroyed, the grid goes down, and death is happening like crazy all over the earth. So, by, so the, the, the fighting, the famine, the plague, the animals, um, it's gonna be very bad. And this is, this is, wow, I mean, and a fourth of the earth, a fourth of the earth will die as a consequence of all of this stuff. So not a good time to, to be on earth. It's going to be very, very bad. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those. One second, I got to move this one second. The previous. All right. Okay. Okay. When he opened the fifth cell, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were likely to be killed as they had been was completed. So a lot of people, I mean, when this Antichrist society arises, it is very much against Christians. Christians are going to be on the menu for absolute destruction. And so if you have a Christian footprint on this planet, um, you risk being killed. And as we get farther into Revelation, God is not going to protect us from martyrdom. There are going to be a lot of martyrs during the tribulation period. And, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like these people are going to be in a very difficult time because the question arises when, when we suffer as Christians, it's like, you know, I thought God would protect us. What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What happened to Daniel in the lion's den? Why isn't he protecting us? Because throughout history, God has done a very good job of protecting Christians. There have been martyrs, but there are far more Christians that have been protected from harm than that, those that have been martyred. But now we're seeing widespread martyrdom widespread, widespread all over the earth. And so the question becomes, God, you, you love us, so why are you letting us be slaughtered like this? And so a lot of souls in heaven from, that have been martyred during this horrible time when Antichrist has been allowed to roam free. And so the question is, you're sovereign, you know everything, you meet out justice. So when is justice going to happen for us? Because look, it's still going on. They're still killing us, okay? And the Lord, Lord responds says, you, the white robe. What is the significance of the white robe? We're going to be talking about that quite a bit through the book of Revelation. Well, essentially, the white robe is the, is, is the, the robe that we receive from Christ. You know, we had filthy robes. Our robes were dirty because of all the sins. All the sins that we create create a filthy white robe. And the, the robe reveals our sin state. And these people, they are believers. They made it. They entered God's rest, and they are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. 
And so that you can't sin anymore, you know, there. I mean, that, that option is off the table. And so they are, they are adopted into God's family, as all believers are. But they're told, you know, it's like, you know, I am going to get vengeance. Hang on. I'm about to give them a big fat spanking. There will be justice, but y'all gonna have to wait, okay? There are a few more of those believers that, that, that need to be taken out, okay? And when your brethren are removed from the earth, when they're taken out, then my fist is going to come down. I will judge them. But there are a few more folks down there that are mine. So before I start really whacking the earth, I'm gonna take out most of my children, okay? Dr. Guy, just, yes. I was thinking that the uh, those who were martyred kind of get, got a special status since they gave the ultimate price, so to speak. You know, you're you're right about that, but it just the. I mean, I think you know, I think we all assume that, and I think there's something to it. I'm just because you know, one of the questions that I have is, what is the special significance of their white robes? Um, thank you for bringing that up, by the way. Yeah, yeah, oh, I meant sure, to say something sure. about that. But yeah, you're right. I mean, there's something about these particular robes in particular, and I don't know what it is. I mean, I think that we'll get it when we get there. But right mm -hmm. now, because yeah, everybody gets a white robe, you know, and so I, you're right about that in terms of, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense that that would be a special robe, but I, I don't know of anything delineating that from the, the robe that others get. But, um, you know, I mean, we do know that if we suffer for him, we will reign with him, okay? So that is in scripture. And these yeah. peoples have suffered to the point of death. So their elevation in terms of status goes up. I mean, that is a promise. And maybe that's what it's talking about, that they are, I mean, that it's in a hierarchical sense, there is a blessing that they carry that will be recognized throughout eternity, okay? Okay. So yeah. Something along those lines, something along those lines. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up there, Gary. Oh, sure. Thank you. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made from goat's hair. The whole moon turned blood red all right whoa what's going on here man what would what would do that so we got an earthquake then the sun turned black like sackcloth now depending on this earthquake it says a great earthquake the earth has had great earthquakes before but not over the entire planet okay that suggests something extremely cataclysmic now there are some very supernatural things that happen during the tribulation period. Um, it doesn't all have to be supernatural. Um, there, are, there are astrological things that could happen. Astronomical, not astrological. <laughs> Big difference. There are astronomical events that could cause massive earthquakes and volcanoes to erupt and stuff like that. I mean, um, you know, one of those things, and this is, you know, I, I, I relegate talk of Planet X to conspiracy theory nuts, okay? However, there is actual some evidence for the existence of Planet X. Anybody familiar with that? Planet X is hypothetically, you know, the, the calculations for the orbits of the bodies in our solar system are a little bit off unless you include another gravitational body that is orbiting the sun with extremely large radius. So it's really way, way out there. It only comes into our solar system once every 10 to 20,000 years. And if that body, and it's estimated to be a little bit or larger than Jupiter, actually, it's, it's a very, very massive body. Now, the thing is, if this thing exists, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm very skeptical. On a scale of one to 10, I believe in it maybe a one or a two. So not, I don't have strong belief that it exists because I would like to see it if it exists. And, and right now, astronomers are conflicted about it. Some absolutely believe in it and others absolutely not. I'm not, this is not my area. So I am not, I, I'm not qualified to really say, I'm saying, but if, if something like this exists and it comes into our solar system, the gravitational changes can rip this planet apart. It definitely will cause massive earthquakes. It will cause volcanoes to erupt, all these horrible things. Now, if that were to happen, if something like Yellowstone were to go off, you would have enough dirt in the air to turn the sun dark. I mean, the sun itself won't be dark, but you're, uh, from the Earth perspective, the sun's going to be dark. The moon's going to turn red because of all of the interference with all that dust in the air. Okay, so this is what you would see from the surface of the planet if something like the supervolcano Yellowstone goes off or a 
all the all the volcanoes go off at the same time um that's going to be the the amount of destruction is horrific and yeah one of the first things you're going to notice is you're going to look in the sky and there's going to be so much ash in the sky the sun's going to be dark and the moon will be red okay and the stars in the sky fell to earth as late figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. When I was in college, I had a lot of problems with that. And I think we talked about this in the introductory, um, in the introductory chapter when we first talked about this. And, you know, when I was in college, I thought that was just so stupid. I'm thinking, okay, come on. The stars, if they fell to the earth, Stars are big as our sun, bigger and smaller. And so all it would take is one to completely wipe us out. <laughs> but um, if we're talking about the, from the earth, looking up into the sky, if we had massive meteorites uh, fall, or meteors falling you know, to the earth and you know, turning into meteorites uh, and comet activity, well, that's what that would look like. It would look like the stars are falling to the earth. And uh, there's actually in the movie Greenland, which is going to be released, I think, September 25th, um, you know, they, they show they have scenes in it like that where you can see massive amounts of asteroids or small asteroid fragments coming into Earth's atmosphere. And that's what it looks like. I mean, it, you see balls of light falling to the Earth, uh, streaking to the Earth. And that's uh, it kind of if you don't I mean, because back in those days, they didn't know anything about meteors and asteroids and stuff. So when John describes what he sees, it looks like the stars are falling to the Earth. OK, so uh, it's this is a pretty clear description of a whole lot of, of meteor activity, um, which is extremely destructive, obviously. The sky receded like a scroll rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Okay, now we're into the very supernatural, to where God tears away the veil, and our very reality is ripped, and an opening into the eternal is visible. So this is, uh, this is that now we're completely out of, and this is it. This is, this is the end of earth. So before earth is allowed to die a slow and painful death from all this that it's happened to it because these events are damaging enough to end life on earth these are these are these are extinction level events multiple extinction level events so earth is dead i mean if you're still alive during this time um, you won't be for very long. You're, the species will die out. You're not going to be able to grow food anymore, and you're going to die a slow death. So what this says is that you're not going to, if you're underground, which is going to be dangerous, because if there's this much cataclysmic activity, um, if, if the book of Revelation accurately describes the events of the end times, even underground will not be safe, because the earth is going to be so heated up there's going to be so much molten activity that your underground bunkers are going to be too hot to live in. So there's really, I mean, basically natural caves would probably be your best bet. In terms of staying cool and, uh, and surviving this, natural caves are the way to go. All right. At least it'll allow you to survive a little bit longer. So, but you're not going to be able to live out there because God is going to interrupt the process and end this entire chapter. And so the sky is split and eternity starts shining through. And these people now have no doubt as to what's going on. Now, let's say there are two, there are several models as far as when the rapture occurs. We have the pre-tribulation rapture, and then you have the post-tribulation rapture. Some people go for a mid-trib. I don't know about that one. But if you read the gospels, it sounds like he comes at the end. If you read the epistles, it sounds like he's coming at the beginning. Um, I don't know. I, I prefer the pre-tribulation with every fiber of my being. <laughs> I really would prefer that one. I just don't know. Um, you know, if it's post-trib, then these people on the earth have been aware of the theory that they are in the end times and that Jesus is coming back. Every Christian that they martyr will have told them over and over again that the Lord is returning. So that is go they're not going to be surprised by this. There is going to be widespread awareness that this is biblical. Okay? So this is not something they're going to want to see. They have killed the saints. They have martyred Christians, and they have heard this message. So when the sky splits like that, they're going to know very well that the Christians were right. And that's not going to be a pleasant thought for them, okay? They have allied themselves with satanic entities, with demonic entities. They have allowed themselves to be filled with these entities. And now the end is here. 
the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called on the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? So as I mentioned, yeah, I mean, they're hiding out in the, the places that are not going to get blasted by asteroids, at least as far as, they're, they, as far as they know, not the big ones at least. So they're trying to, to, to shelter themselves from the destruction of the earth. Um, however, uh, they're counting on their fortresses, they're counting on their underground bunkers, they're counting on the natural caves to keep them alive during this calamity. Um, they've seen, probably watched the movies where, yes, asteroids fall to the earth, but mankind survives by hiding out in protected places. Um, what Revelation describes is not a survivable s scenario, okay? It's just not. So if Revelation comes true the way it's described, this is not something that you're going to be able to survive. The earth is, is really um, rendered that inhospitable. And that's it for Revelation chapter 6.